Okay, so this is going to be about the, what is this called again? The lock-on, lock-on script, right? I'm going to try to analyze it so I can um, understand it better. Future reference. Okay. So the guy first starts off by just um, declaring three service variables. He declares um, user input service, run service, and, and uh context action service right this user service user input services for the input because with this script you lock on by pressing F so this is just for the input use for input okay run service I think is for um, he uses it to like c consistently stay on the character so this is like um, um what's that word called a substitution or alternative yeah this is an alternative to um a while a while loop so i think it's, it's more client side and depends on the player's frames so that's what the run service is used for so used for um used instead of a while loop i don't really know what run service is so i might have to look into that more later and the context action service I think he uses this to bind um, the, the player from zooming in and out like with, with their camera and from moving their camera left to right so that it stays locked on the um, the opposing player so used to bind mouse behavior okay I don't know if I'm on my mic <coughs> All right, so then we just name some general variables like player, character, humanoid, and the root part, humanoid root part. Um, humanoid root part is just used to like um, make the character consistently face the player, the closest player, okay? We have range, this is gonna be the distance between like how far or whatever the nearest player is like the the maximum range they can be in for them to be locked on we have the camera which is what we're going to be using oh, okay so i take that back so the, the humanoid root part is just for like i guess because we're going to be changing the camera not the actual uh, um i think root part uh, we have lock on which is going to be a sentinel so the sen sentinel um, for whether whether we are locked on or not okay target is just going to be for whether uh, where whether the player um, there is a player or enemy near us used to store the instance okay all right, so we have our first function here. This function serves the purpose of just finding the closest player or um, a human object, the closest player or the closest object that um, has a humanoid. Okay, finds uh, the closest enemy. All right. So target distance. And this is just. Um, uh, because this function is going to be called repeatedly, I think it has its own, uh, I don't know why, he, he made another variable for target distance, but I just set this to this, the same range right here. So, if we were to change the distance, we could just change range to like, if we wanted to be like, we wanted to have a farther radius, you can just change it 90, whatever, depending on how far you want it to be. And that's what target distance is. Um, found target is, is um, also stores the the closest player so since we're gonna be calling this f this function a bunch of times they're gonna be repeatedly trying to see who, which one is the nearest um, player I think that's what that's what it does so stores the nearest player okay so this first are um, in pairs loop first um, loop right here um, serves the purpose of just going through the workspace and getting every single um, object that has a humanoid in it, you know, 
and then that's when it starts to determine whether it's closer or not. It compares whichever is the closest and sets whatever is the closest to found target right here, the variable found the variable found target. Okay. So serves the per purpose of uh, of searching through workspace um, to find the uh, workspace workspace consistently updating um, was it target found target variable in order to um, keep the closest enemy and set it as the global target variable. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, so the way that I did it, he did it a different way, but like I did it this way. I just did um, V. If V is a model, then. Or no, I did. Okay, so I had two variables. I had the, the E model, enemy model, and the enemy root, right? We did if. I know we did enemy model equals V is a model. This is going to return a Boolean value on whether. So this returns a Boolean value on whether um, the player. Sorry, my keyboard is too loud. Okay, whether the player. Okay, on whether the player <coughs> or or enemy is an object. Wait, no. <laughs> Wait, player enemy is or is a model. Actually, no. This this, this okay. So it returns a boolean on whether whether the object is an a player or enemy. Yeah. Okay. And this one, um, local e root equals v find first child human root part. This returns whether um, the object has a humanoid root part. And this is necessary, needed to lock on. Yeah, this this was this would be needed to lock on to the player, so this is very necessary. And our first conditional um, is basically saying that if um, if this is a model and has um, a humanoid root part, right? And this model is not our character because here character is defined as our character. So this is saying this here is saying if um, um, the uh, if this is a player slash enemy and the player slash enemy isn't um, our character then that's what this is saying right and then anything if if it makes it past this conditional statement right that means that the object is a character and a character with a humanoid root part that isn't no, that isn't our character okay let me capitalize that this isn't our character okay all right so um then we make another variable called mag mag short for magnitude um we do local mag equals root that position minus um e root dot position dot magnitude this basically returns the distance this returns returns the distance between the um, said object or said um, player slash enemy from our player our character okay and here we're saying that if if uh, that distance is less than target distance in this case our target distance is um uh range which is 30 so if it's less if the dis the distance between us and the enemy is less than 30 studs that's the um the distance how um you know distance is measured for Roblox right so if it's less than 30 studs then um the player is in range that's what it means 
right so when the player is in range what we do now is that we set um i don't know why he did it this right here he said target is equal to magnitude oh okay okay oh okay 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 oh so i see i see i see i see i see okay okay let me actually oh, okay i take that back so basically right here right this gets the magnitude of yeah this gets the distance so yeah it returns the distance between the player and um like the enemy and our character right and then this conditional checks if that distance is less than our recent distance right okay okay i see i see i see um okay right so let's because let's, cause you know how we're going to be calling this a bunch of times right um once we go through every single player or our object that has a humanoid right if a player moves closer or whatever and you want it to relock on it's going to have like a saved um uh distance so then it compares that here if it's closer than the old distance then it's going to set the new player to the new target to the closest player and then it's going to set the the new updated um distance as that distance to be used for comparison later on if that makes sense so that's what this function does um this function basically just um uh serves the purpose of so the purpose of um, disab disabling and enabling the mouse behavior when the player is locked onto another player. Okay, that's what this one does right here. So I don't know too much about action service, so I can't I can't really explain it all. But basically, when we call this function and we say off, this code it just serves the purpose of just disabling the ability to the ability to um scroll in and out actually no off off returns it back to normal okay but when it's when it's on right that's when right here that's when we disable the player's ability to zoom in and out and move the camera with the right mouse button that's what this does okay so then we have our input began events okay that one is called through user input service and the parameters that we have for this one are key and game processed event. Okay. Is that yeah parameters yeah 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 okay. So key is basically what we're going to be use, uh, what we're going to be using to check the actual key code, and game processed event is going to be what we use uh, to tell whether the player is typing or not. So let's say the player wants to type F because right here our key to lock on is F right but we want to make sure that it doesn't just lock on when the player is trying to type in the chat so we got to use this to make sure that um, if they're not trying to type and they're actually trying to lock on to another player so that's why here on line 72 we have if game process event then return n this is saying that this means that um, if the player is typing then we don't proceed we don't go on to the following code so if they're typing that means that if this is true that means they're typing right so that means this we don't do this we just we, do, we literally just go back up to here and then we end it and then we, we skip this entire code under it okay so if they aren't typing and they are trying to lock on we're gonna do if the key code equals F if they're pressing F that's what this means this whole line means if they're pressing F right then we do we check we check the lock on um, sentinel okay so if lock on then that means the player just locked off so if lock on is already true that means that the player is trying to lock off so that means this code right here this it, it turns lock on false meaning that now it's set to off it's gonna remove the target set it to nil which means it's empty it's gonna allow the player to rotate their character and it's gonna allow the mouse to act like normal this here it just allows um, the player to see their mouse because when you're locked on let me show you how it looks like if I were to play right and I was locked on like see look press F 
you can't see the mouse. See how the mouse disappeared? When I'm locked, when I'm locked off, you can see the mouse moving around. So yeah. No, turn off. Okay. So that's what this does. It just makes you makes you able to see it again once you turn off the lock on, right? Else, this else means that um the player is locked off and is attempting to lock on. That's what this else means. So that means everything here is gonna be trying to lock the player on to the closest character. So if lock on equals true, then we're gonna do target find nearest. Um, we're gonna do target e target equals find nearest root. So this is the function that we talked about, the first function. As you can see here at the end, it returns found target. So whatever it finds, it returns that. So yeah, um, we're gonna store that as a target and then the global variable target is going to now be set to whatever um, player is closest that was found in this function. Okay. And it's going to set the humanoid auto rotate to false, meaning that they can't like move around. Because you know how like when you play, for example, if I click play and I try to move around like this, you see I can do that. If I were to lock on, I can't do that anymore. That's what I'm I'm assuming that means. Okay. It also sets the mouse behavior off so I can not scroll in and out and move side to side. And also makes the mouse icon invisible. Okay. So now we come down to the run service, um, run service render stepped uh, loop. I think it's a loop. I don't really know that much about render stepped. But yeah. So what this does is that if there's a target, right, this is, this could, while this is running, right, this always runs. So this is always running. So, so yeah, it's gonna be consistently checking. So this is saying that um, if the target, if the target exists, right, and lock on is true, then um, we have a local variable called magnitude as well. We're gonna do mag equals root that position minus target that position that magnitude, right? That's gonna return. This returns returns the distance between the player. Our, our player and the enemy. Okay. And if if the magnitude is less than fifty, this would be range. I'm gonna change this to range. But if it's less than the, your range that you had up here, right? Then, um, I think less than or equal to should be fine. So if it this basically means that if this if the they are in range, right? So if they're in range, then, um. Yeah, if they're in range, it just sets their it sets your camera. It basically sets so this this right here sets your camera to it sets your camera to them. So like it positions your camera to like give you the lock on effect. And this that's what this whole chunk of code is basically doing. Just C framing is like repositioning your camera to look at their um their person, right? Else, if they're not in range, then it just resets everything. So it sets target to nil. Lock on becomes false, and auto rotate like it lets you rotate and all that stuff. It basically turns it off if they're too far. So, so yeah, let's test it out. See when we're here, we press F to lock on. If we're close enough, it locks on. Right, and if we're too far, it automatically locks off. As you can see, because they're out of range now. Okay. So. Yeah, that's basically what it does. Um, credit to that guy for making the video, but I felt like I would help a lot of people out if I were to explain exactly what he did to my best ability. So, yeah.